AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, if you have last minute shopping that you didn't do before Christmas, my book is on sale on Amazon. I'll put a link below. Check it out. Today, we have two very special guests. They have their own show called Plant-Based in the Burbs. Their names are Sherry and Paige, and they're going to be making some quick and easy recipes like a smashed chickpea and avocado salad sandwich and savory walnut tacos, plant-based, of course. Please welcome to the show, Sherry and Paige. It's so nice to see you guys. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, this is great. So is this is this going to be your, uh, your Christmas Eve uh, offering today? Well, it, it'll be at my Christmas Eve lunch, maybe. You know, I have a house full of men, so it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So tell us about Plant Based in the Burbs. When did that start? Where can we watch it? Paige, why don't you go ahead and start with that? Okay. So, yes, right now you can watch it on Unchained TV. We have six in studio shows. And let me just tell you how it started was these two girlfriends were working out together. We're both trainers at the time. I've moved on. She's still the fitness guru trainer. Um, but we decided to have some green drinks um together I might have a little beats in there I think and I don't know the other stuff in there but next thing you know we we went live on on Facebook because we had learned how to do that and we started bantering and we said you know someone around us said you should do a show together and we're like should we do that yeah. and then that's kind of how it all started it was about back in 2019 and then we got our we got our group together in 2020 and then we separated and went into kitchens and we were live every pretty much every week uh, on Facebook Live on Unchained TV. And then we did in studio. Now you can catch catch them on Unchained TV on the streaming network. So, yeah. <laughs> it's great. been great. It's been great. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I love it. I love it. So that's cool. You guys are cooking in two different kitchens on the show. Do you cook in different kitchens or do you cook together? On the on Facebook the Live that we still do, mm -hmm. we're, we're separate because we, we, it's kind of fun to be in separate kitchens, actually. You're kind of in your own groove and you're making a mess. But in studio, we are in Sherry's special in studio kitchen that we've set up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. Hey, yeah. in case our viewers are not familiar with you guys, maybe tell a little bit about your journey to plant based eating and living. Go for it, Sherry. OK, uh, so I'm Sherry. I go by Sherry Sheree if you want to follow me on any social media, IG. And, you know, it's so weird because I really didn't even think about vegan per se when I started I had belonged to this church and every year they do a fast and this particular year I thought okay let's do something extremely hard um and so I told my husband we're going to give up meat for 14 days okay so he was so angry with me but we stuck to it for 14 days we just got rid of meat, right? So we were making stuffed potatoes with black beans and avocado and all that type of stuff. And eventually after the 14 days, because you do start to create a habit, I wasn't really interested in eating meat anymore. Uh, and as we start to learn and progress, seeing different documentaries like uh, Game Changer, What the Health, we decided to eliminate dairy from our product, from our diet. And so now it's been seven years. My husband and I have been on this vegan plant-based journey and we're not looking back. So that's my story. Now I understand what it meant to be vegan or plant-based and all the elements that are surrounded by living this lifestyle, what it is you need to learn about animal agriculture and just the torture of animals. So that's where your mind starts to expand once you go on the journey and you start to dig and start to educate yourself. So that's that's my story. So here we are. <laughs> Terrific. What about you, Paige? Well, um, <laughs> It's so funny because we were so parallel. We didn't mm -hmm. even know it. And then we started exchanging notes. But um, my daughter had gone vegan at 13. She came home from middle school. She was doing a report on um, food waste. And she came home and she had seen some videos of animals being tortured. And she thought, said, I'm going vegan for the animals. And I, you know, I really didn't understand what all that meant. I pretty much avoided people who were out there protesting and things. I just, you know, was living my comfy life. So um, I decided to get more educated and uh, also just started to see what would that be like 
what does that mean? And I start changing my palate um, to eating the, the, the vegan food with her and cooking with her. And then we have a couple restaurants near me, one Joy Cafe, shout out to them. They have a big screen in their restaurant that just says, you know, chickpeas versus chicken and the protein um, breakdown or the, you know, the nutrient breakdown and um, on beef versus uh, what was it like beets or something. I forget, you know, it, it just all this amazing content. And I remember thinking like, okay, all right. It kind of ticks off the health box for me. Yeah, I could get the protein through the plants. And then um, again, I wasn't about the animals at all that I watched Cowspiracy. I sat down with my daughter and watched that film. And that's when it clicked because I used, you know, I walk around, I still walk around with a lot of sustainable products and I'm like, bring your own, you know, do the right thing. And and, um, you know, bring your own straw and could well, save the animals that way. But then I would go out and eat sushi. So I learned in Cowspiracy the amount of um, resources we were using to get like a burger on my plate. And I thought all that water. Meanwhile, I was shutting off the water on my 15 year old who was taking longer showers. I'd literally go in there and turn off the shower. I was that crazy mom. So eco vegan, I used to carry a basket around that that clicked for me but also i think aligning with your own daughter like for me was the consciousness and that that really clicked and i have a very dear friend that when i make the recipe that's inspired by her ria she would talk to me about veganism and i'm best friends and we go to vegan restaurants i didn't get it connected mm. until i was literally sitting there when I saw that film. And then later I became an animal rights activist by, by attending um, vigils, seeing pigs in their eyes and seeing things that uh, were happening as they were on their way to, to a slaughterhouse. So that's, that's my journey. And it's been an incredible one. I've been, uh, you know, just educated in so many ways and chef AJ, just real quickly, she and I knew each other before I was vegan. And so Shout out to you as well, Chef AJ, because you shared things in a workshop and I learned. Um, and then I think that all kind of stuck in like seeds, every little right. seed that we plant, that we plant as vegans or those that are pre-vegans that listen, you know, those are all part of somebody's journey, eventually maybe going vegan. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I didn't realize you guys have been doing the show for so many years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> two years or almost three. <laughs> Maybe talk about how people can watch Unchained TV. Cause I don't think people realize you can actually get a free app for your phone and watch, watch everything now. You can. Yeah. Real quick. You can download it on your phone. You can download it uh, on your television. You can get it through a fire stick or Am Apple TV. You can also get it through unchainedtv.com. You can click at the top, watch now, and you can browse and you can just see lots of documentaries and cooking shows and mini docs and music videos and inspiring content for every, every person, pre-vegans, vegans, you know, whatever age. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. How many episodes have you done? Uh, are we at six? We're at we six, have six. We have six in studio, but if you go on Facebook, Facebook, we've been doing the Facebook lives every week on Wednesdays for the most part on Unchained TV on Facebook. So right. you can see that there, but also you could go to unchainedtv.com and type in our name and you will see recipes there. We've been, we've been providing recipe content over there too. And the yeah. shows that we do on Facebook are embedded. So We've been busy, Chef AJ. Right. You know, as Chef, we also to interrupt. What before we even started the show, Paige used to grab me all the time, and we used to do lunch break lives. So that was something we. So we've been doing this for a really long time. And now when I'm, I was thinking back, like seemed like every time I looked up, we were doing a lunch break live. You know, so because that's one of the things that James was doing at that time. She would go into your kitchen and you would cook. And then when COVID happened, you know, things changed. But yeah, we were doing that. I don't know, for a year before we even started our show, I believe. So we've been pretty busy. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, I can't wait. To, are each of you going to do one recipe? Are you going to cook back and forth like an iron chef? We could do that. We each have a recipe. Yes. Yeah. So huh. wherever you want to do it. Yeah. You know, usually like I throw it up to Sherry to full screen it while I'm making some things happen back here. But however we want to do Are you, uh, what do you think? <laughs> My stuff's raw, so she she might want to sizzle on her, you know. No, her. I'm, I'm kind of raw, too, so today. I'm raw also. <laughs> nice. Well, let's see what you're making. All right. Sherry, you okay. want to start? Yeah, I guess. Okay, let me just start with this. I'm starting with a can of organic gabanza beans or chickpeas, whatever you want to call them. Um, what I do is I 
uh, drain them and keep the liquid because it's aquafaba that you can also use in baking. So you want to save that, put it in another jar and save it for baking. It's a great substitute for eggs. And I drained it. And then we're going to start. Here we are right here with some just fresh chickpeas. I'm going to mash them. This is like a super, super easy, quick recipe. So I'm just going to mash these add some garlic, some seasoning, some obey, some onion, um, green onions and cilantro. And then avocado is going to be our mix to get it all nice and moist. Toast it, put it on some bread and whatever greens you want to put on it. Snap, crackle, pop. That easy. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell everyone what I'm going to be making. I'm going to be making some walnut meat. Now, here's the cool thing is this is, you can warm this up, but we're doing a raw experience today with these. And so I'm going to put these into a mixer. You can do it in a blender. You can, this, this is my old time mixer. Got it when I got married. So it's 26 years old. Yes, I've been <laughs> 26 years. But I also, I'm going to throw in eco tips as we go, because yeah. I want people to, um, you know, just have an opportunity. So if you buy in bulk, just put things in a jar. This was a juice, a juicy jar that I, uh, you know, thing, glass jar that I grabbed. And I just think, isn't that cute and sexy? So I put my my bed, uh, my nuts in the refrigerator as well so they don't go rancid. So, you know, lots of health value in having walnuts. So we're going to put a cup of the walnuts uh, in with a cup of water to start. And Sherry, what are you doing over there? So right now, you know, I this is funny because when I made this recipe a long time ago, I just used a fork because that's what I had. And I went on a search looking for a potato masher. <laughs> it was really challenging for me to find. I had to go to a restaurant type um, supply kitchen to, uh, to buy a masher. So this is my first time using it. So this is, I'm excited. So what we're doing here, we're just going to mash them up as much as possible. You do want to leave a little bit of uh, the chickpeas whole or half, because then that gives more texture uh, to your to your sandwich. And you want to have a little texture. You don't want things really mushy. I mean, unless you like it that way, you know, everybody has their own preference. Me, I do like to feel a little bit of bite in there, like a little bit of texture. So that's what I'm doing right now, Paige. So I'm going to put a half a cup of water. We're going to just go back and forth. So listen, you're going to get this recipe. So don't worry. Just sit back and relax. And you can do this later. You can also replay this. Go to the YouTube for Chef AJ. And you can replay this. You can replay it. Share it out to your friends. You know, just have some fun with it. So we're going to put that half a cup in here. Again, this is like one of the most easy, breezy recipes for y'all. You're just going to... Love it. Okay, now what are we going to add to this? We're going to get that lemon. If you, one kitchen gadget that I absolutely love, right? I mean, I use it almost every single time. Tom, if you're watching, he knows. So this, this is a lemon squeezer. Oh, she has one too. Yes, she does. And we're just going to squeeze that in. You don't have to have one of these, trust me. You can just squeeze it with your own hands. But it does keep the um, seeds from falling, which I like, you know. So we're going to squeeze that right in there, half of a lemon. And again, her taste, this is going to give you your palate, the straight up, and you can add, you can add more, you can add more, maybe you want a more lemony, but I'm going to do a half a lemon. I'm also going to put in a carrot and a celery. Now, I'm not going to put it like this. I'm going to chop it up a little bit just to make it a little easier because, I mean, can you imagine the, the cacophony going on? I want to let everybody know we're also going to be doing a blender dance. So if you're out there watching, <laughs> the key things that Sherry's going to talk about is how we need to move our bodies. So. We're going to get that going in a little bit, but a little warm up. We'll get some warm up happening if you want to. You know, you can get your body moving like this before we put it in, you know. And Sherry, what about those fitness tips? I don't know. You want to give them now? Yeah, I can, I can give them now. Of course, what I'm going to do before I do that, Paige, I want to just let them know that I did take some nice, I'm going to show you the whole, but I did take some green onions. I wanted to just really use the top. You can use about a fourth. This is what the basic recipe is. And so you have to remember the rate recipe that is supplied is the basic. You can turn around and make it your own and add whatever you like in it. So that's what I'm doing today, even though it's posted. So we're going to take one fourth cup of green onions. I'm just going to add that right on into the mashed um, uh, chickpeas. And then I added some uh, onion powder. I added, this is my new jam here, this roasted garlic. You can get it at uh, gar roasted garlic powder. Love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, my staple, Old Bay. We're going to just sprinkle a little bit of that in there because we got to have flavor in our food. That's what makes us want to enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. But let me give you one tip, and then we'll go back to Paige so I can give them in and out. 
first tip in the morning, get up, drink you some water, warm water or regular water. You can add lemon to it if you want to. You want to get that digestive system getting moving. You don't want to go ahead and put coffee in it first. So that's one tip. And along with that is to stay hydrated throughout the day. Now it's even harder to drink water because it's colder in different parts of the country and people don't want to drink water. You're looking to have something really hot, right? So, but we do need to hydrate ourselves. So try to drink at least half your weight in ounces in water. Also, you can have vegetables that are high in water, like your zucchini, your cucumber, you can make a juice. Coconut water is another way to hydrate yourself if you're really bored with water. But those are the first tips. And then I'm going to go right back and get this mash all together. It's on you, Paige. I love it. Sherry Cherie. Okay, it's Coach Sherry, y'all. We can call her Coach Sherry as well. Check this. I'm going to put the garlic in. So we have in here some water. We have the walnuts. And make them raw, y'all. You don't have to soak them on this on this one, on this recipe. You got the one carrot, one stalk of celery. Now let's get some seasoning. But before we do the seasoning, I am going to give you an eco tip. Keep a jar next to where you are working. Toss in your scraps. Okay. And then guess what? We're going to be making a broth with this later. You're going to add some water to this. You're going to simmer it and you're going to strain it. And guess what? You're going to have yourself some veggie broth. So there you go. Now, the other thing you can do with this, if you're not into that idea, you can compost. We're going to talk about compost a little bit later as well. Something to look forward to. So just get your scraps out of the trash. It's very important. Now, what else are we going to add to this? We're going to add some red pepper because we want some color going on with this. So uh, we've got the carrot and we've got the so we're going to do a half of a red pepper. How pretty is she? She smells so good. And this is an opportunity for me to let you know, please, please shop at your farmer's markets and thank your farmers because they're working hard to bring us our fruits and veggies and nuts and grains and seeds. And that's very important that we say thank you. So we're going to thank those. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, farmers. Now, what's oh, today? Do? Actually, to cut you off, I, you know, there's a farmer's market right across the street. I didn't know if it was going to be there today because of today is Christmas Eve. Yeah. Sure enough, they were there. I said, let's go. I got beets and uh, cabbage and stuff and kale for my dinner tomorrow. So I'm excited. Thank you, farmers. You know what? For your dinner, you're going to be, oh, I thought you were going to say to juice it because you've been juicing those beets. I have been juicing, but I'm going to, I've been craving cabbage. So I'm going to boil some cabbage tomorrow for dinner. So that's going to be nice. That's, that's a thing, craving cabbage. I love that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to put some cumin in this because again, mm -hmm. you know, listen, we want to make this the most spicy, delicious. When you think about it, you brought this up earlier, texture and seasoning are two key things. When you go vegan, and, you know, you're headed to that plant-based vegan world, texture, and you want those familiar flavors and those smells and so forth. So we're going to add some cumin, just a dash in there, a dash will do you. You can always add more, right? Of course. And um, we're going to add some ground cinnamon. How about that? Why not? Cinnamon in the morning, by the way, in your coffee or your tea is essential. Really but, good thing to add. It's there for lowering your blood pressure. Getting that in there. Yes. Okay. Are we ready? You're mashing. Do you want to show us your mash? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Let me just give them an update because I've really been getting down over here. So, what avocado is added to this mix? The green onions, the seasoning, super easy. I'm going to add a lime just to keep everything looking fresh and give you that little acid that you need in your diet and make sure our avocado doesn't brown. Pretty much, this is done. All I'm going to do now is toast some bread, which I'm digging this bread here. I really don't eat bread that much, but this is kind of like one I like to a nice sourdough bread, easy vegan. So we're going to go. Okay. All Should right. So go ahead and hold do on. This. I'm a toast. Okay. Wait, wait. I need, we, we're going to do this together. We're right. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to dance with you while I put my toast in the toaster. Are y'all ready? Get up. Let's go. We're going to pulse and we're going to blend. And we're going to make this happen. Are y'all ready? We're going to do a little blender dance now. Here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. That's cute. Let's go. I hope you're up, AJ. I hope you're up dancing right now. Yeah, I, I'm monitoring the chat, but that uh, who invented the blender dance? Jane on her show. What, what, what's the show? Is she she's still doing the show on Amazon Prime? 
Yeah, she she so, invented, she invented it. Yeah, she new did. day, new chef. But let me say, she we, invented it. Yeah, so we were doing lunch break live together. There was a blender dance thing happening. Then it carried over into new day, new chef. So you're gonna want to watch that on here. You're going to grab it from right here. Y'all go to Unchained TV. You can get that show for free. So if you don't have Amazon Prime, you can see it there too. But let me just say, you can get New Day New Chef right here. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I was so grateful to, to, to associate produce that show. It was so much fun. We had a blast. The chefs were amazing. And we just all had so much fun making that show. It was a great, great time. Great time. So <laughs> back to what Sherry's mashing, and we did a blender dance. We did that, and we have a blended experience over here. I'm so excited to show you in just a moment, but back to you, Sherry. So you know what? I just realized, you know, sometimes it happens when you're in the kitchen. You have a recipe. I'm looking at all my ingredients and thinking, okay, I put everything in. No, I did not. So I'm going to cut some cilantro, add the cilantro, because I love cilantro. So we're going to put some of that into our mixture here so we can get ready. And then let me just tell you this. So I decided I wanted to add some extra greens to my sandwich. So we have some broccoli sprouts that I'm going to add on there. Some daikon uh, sprouts we're going to put on there. We have our greens that we're going to put on there, mixed greens. We're going to make sure that we have a tomato to go on that sandwich. I think that's about it that I have right now. And a little bit of mustard is my thing. So look okay. okay. at it's this, y'all. So we were getting, a, we were having a lot of fun with that. So we did a little bit more of a blend than I wanted, like more <laughs> mixture, but I don't mind. Actually, this is pretty cool. I wasn't experiencing this. It looks like, I'm going to tell you, it does look like tuna fish for real. I mean, whoa. And you would never know. I mean, it's walnuts and walnuts are so healthy. Oh my God. They're so great. They're so good for brain health. I mean, if you look at a walnut, like you said, Yes. We're, we're talking about a walnut looks just like your brain. So we know that it has omegas in that, right? right. So if it's something you want to eat, they're great alternative meat alternatives. I mean, you can do a lot with it. You can make loaf and lentils and walnuts all mixed together and mushrooms. I mean, it's, it can, it's sky's the limit, really. You just have to experiment. So we have this deliciousness. So that's going to be our filling, y'all. And we're going to add to that as we go. So that's our filling. We got that. Now. We talked about composting. I want to say we're going to be making a cheesy sauce, but I wanted to also say we're, I have a beautiful tray. You know, I'm all about the presentation. So we have a gorgeous yeah. tray here. And I want to say that last night we had a little shindig. I had some leftover tomatoes. This was a juicy jar. And check it out. We just put them right in there. So save your jars, y'all, to save your scraps. What do you have? So this was a jar I had dill pickles in this. Of course, I didn't take the label off, but what I did was I just took my cilantro, I cleaned it, I chopped off the ends, and I just put it in some water, and I'm just sitting it here. So this can go in the refrigerator, gives it a little more life, keeps it, you know, looking great. So that's another yeah. way to do things, right? Oh, my gosh. Now, I have a question for you, Chef AJ. What's happening in the chat? Let me see. I'm watching you guys. You guys. <laughs> uh, Renee wants to know, Paige, are you from the South? Yes. You know what? I spent a year, my family's from the South and I use y'all. Did Have I been using, is that what makes it? But yeah, I lived in Tennessee for one year on, uh, it was a cattle ranch farm. My family were into cattle ranching and uh, not anymore, but yes. So I do have some Southern roots in me and I throw out y'all because when I was in third grade, we were saying y'all, it was a, it was what I was learning to say. Third grade. Y'all. But California, most of my life. That's yeah. funny. Uh, people are asking me to do the blender dance. And if they want to see it, I was on Jane's show. And you can watch that free now on Unchained TV, right? Right. <laughs> That's right. Your new day, new chef. That's right. Um, That's Sherry, over to you. because Okay, I'm sure. You know what? So I, I'm almost ready. I just toast up my bread here. I got to toast it. But I'm also putting a little side salad with my... Um, with my sandwich. So what I did was I took my kale, I add a little bit of vinegar, apple cider vinegar on it, just a little bit, just so that I can break it down just a bit. We're gonna add some walnuts, some cranberries. We're gonna cut up pear, a little bit of pear because pear is in season right now. And it's something that I really do enjoy. So we're gonna add that to the salad. And then I made a nice little tahini dressing to go over that, super easy. Two tablespoons of tahini. Uh, well, let's see. Let me. I wrote it down so I can make sure. One, two tablespoons of balsamic vinaigrette. Warm filtered water. 
Maple syrup, if you want it, is up to you. If you want to add that and a little bit of pepper and the warm water helps you to emulsify it. So now you have a nice little salad dressing. Super, super easy, quick. That's all I got to say, Paige. Oh, let's add another tip though. Okay, so another tip. tip. Another tip is, so we did water, right? Okay, so let's talk about sleep. I like to keep it basic. I like to keep it so that you understand what I'm talking about. These are things that we have to do in life. Please make sure you get enough rest. You know, I used, I get up super early to start my clients. So I set alarm on my phone to make me know that it's time for me to go to bed. And you're going to create that habit. I like to get anywhere from seven, six to seven hours of sleep. That does me well. So think about what is it you need to be at your ultimate. And also think about when you're going to sleep, what's going on with your body. You're regenerating these cells so you can get up and get active and do what you need to do. So that's my tip. Go to bed. Okay. <laughs> You know, she's a certified trainer, y'all. Coach Sherry, she means business. She used to get me up at 5 a.m. Well, I'd get up for it. And, and we could. <laughs> I'll get up for that it. That was the best shape I was ever in. All right. Meanwhile, we're going to put the half a cup of water. We're going to get these a full cup of the cashews going. Here we go. So this is going to be our cashew creamy sauce on top of the walnut tacos. Are you with me? Okay. So we're going to go again. These are raw. We keep them in a jar. Why not? That's fun. And keep them in the refrigerator. Okay. And then, oh, another tip though, that's kind of fun, a food tip is oh. I've been leaving nuts, walnuts, um, cashews, and almonds in a sweet little heart bowl around the house. Rather than candy, I've got those nuts out and guess what? They're empty by the end of the day. I got a full house right now. There's five of us in here and everybody's walking by. Yum, <laughs> almost. Not the key, not candy, right? We don't have a bunch of candy around. So that's just a really good tip. Now we want this to be looking like a cheddar cheesy. What's going to do that for us? There's a couple things. Those of you out there, let me hear what you got to say. How would you make a cheesy sauce be cheddar cheesy like? So let's get, let's get on that. Well, we're going to use turmeric. We're going to use turmeric, turmeric, however you want to say okay. it. Nice that turmeric, turmeric is a little bit of pepper. So we're going to put both of those in there. We're going to get that going. And, um, you know, let me just say something about Chef AJ. I just want to give a quick Chef AJ. Because <laughs> I've learned so much from you, Chef AJ. And I want to shout out to the rest of the chefs that came before. Oh, my God. We're learning from you all. We are taking our tips and our little grabs, which means everybody is a chef in their own kitchen and in their own lives. If you're in the kitchen cooking something, you're your own chef. So let's just call it truth. But studying the experts like Chef AJ, I've been learning so much from you, Chef AJ, over the years. So that's a good. That was a good tip because you know the thing is, is when I'm looking for recipes, I go straight to Google, right? Yeah. Because every recipe is a base for something, right? And it gives you the, uh, the directions just to get things started. And then once you've made it maybe once, then you know something that you would, might want to change that fits your taste buds. And that way you make the recipe your own. So I'm giving kudos to all the chefs out there because this is no joke. I mean, this is something that is, it is a science, a food science. So thank you, Chef AJ. One, thank you for having us here. And uh, go ahead, Paige, do your thing. <laughs> okay, got a question from John. Do you guys soak your chickpeas? Mm. I did not today. No, I, I never soak them. I just do it straight from the can. Rinse and go. And, and here's questions from Barbara. What special vegan Christmas treats do you all make? Mm, I don't make any Christmas treats. My daughter's been there. She's been in the kitchen. What? What? With Sherry? I'm just going to change it. I was going to say I make a sweet potato pie. I, I make a sweet potato pie vegan. I make a pecan pie vegan. And now I found this new lemon loaf that I'm just totally addicted to. I got to stop making it because I'm the one who wants to eat it all. <laughs> So I will be making those later on tonight for my family so that we can, so we can have some treats in, in the house. Okay. I'm not really, I used to bake, but I have, my daughter now is 21. So we've been almost vegan eight years. Um, so she's in here cooking all kinds of really cool stuff. She did a, a pumpkin bread on the bottom and a brownie mix and kind of did a swirl. Oh, nice. Thing. And then she, you know, she did her egg replacer. And then um, she, my husband made <laughs> chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. 
because my son likes those. So those happened. And I mean, just, but right now I'm on a 21 day reset. <laughs> so I'm not having any of it, but you know, that that's through Queen of Green and her Eat Yourself Sexy Journey. So I'm, you know, I'm learning discipline through the, through the season. <laughs> um, Fantastic. So back to the recipe real quick, because I really want to get us up and moving too. We're going to okay. add apple cider vinegar to this to give it a little bit of a, like a little tang. So, I mean, cashews are your best friends, but nuts are also your best friends and seeds. You can make seed cheese as well. So, I mean, pretty much anything you can kind of like look it up and see. Maybe they somebody on Chef AJ's show has made them. I remember when you had Shrimu, you had Julie on. Oh, they were also my inspiration, by the way. Shout out to Rich Roll and Julie Payette. Oh my gosh, because they live out here and they had made this book. I bought their book called The Plant Power Way. And I thought, okay, I can do this. I can make some of these recipes. So make a cookbook if you're out there thinking about it, because yeah. somebody out there is going to resonate with it. And maybe it'll be the thing that actually flips them into, you know, full vegan lifestyle. So just so you know. All right, let's put some of this in here, Miss Sherry. You know what's going to happen next, everybody. We're going to get you up and moving. And again, shout out to Jane Velez Mitchell, who created this. Oh, yes. oh, for sure. On Chain TV, face, Facebook, and then. The oh, goat. She is the goat. She, she is the goat. Paige, if, if you had to guess, how many like episodes has Jane done in her life? Oh, my gosh. Lunch Break Lives? Well, I yeah. produced it for about three and a half years or four years. I mean, we, we went all the way through quarantine and everything. So. I, you know, I, that's wow. a good one. That's a good one. If you talk about 365 every day for about five years, so yes. but you do that math, let me know. Three, six, nine. Every day she did it. Over a thousand. Let's just say it's over, probably over a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So we, did, <laughs> she did that. we did that. Lisa, Lisa Carlin, you oh, know, yes. Trump and all the other chefs on the Unchained TV and all the people that said, yes, thank you. All the volunteers who volunteer chefs. Oh my gosh. I just like, wow. It was such uh, a, a team. It takes a team and you it know, it, it takes a team and it's great that everyone wanted to volunteer and support her. And, you know, it's, it, it's a great cause because this is something new that she's doing. That's it's a new trail. She's a trailblazer. That's all I have to say for this. So basically you're thinking about Unchained TV being like the vegan Netflix. So yes. that's pretty incredible. Free content y'all. You're going to want to head over there and get that right now. It's so cool. Just, yeah. just dip it. all right, wait, we got to add lemon. Don't forget. Okay, so add your lemon. We're going to put that lemon in there. Okay. Just squeeze it up. How many of you have one of these? If you don't, I know what you're going to be getting pretty soon here. All right. We're not. And then we're going to blend it. Everybody. We're going to blend it. We're going to get going with this. Let's go. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to be honest. This almost looks a little more liquidy than I'd like. So <laughs> Sometimes it happens like that. That's what's so cool about the show because it really is authentic. I mean, these are things that happen in the kitchen. I mean, a couple of times Paige has her mixer exploded over the whole kitchen and we both were like just stunned. So yeah, I dropped something and I already did burn something this morning, but it's not, but that happened and we don't need to even talk about that. <laughs> but that's what's so cool about you know learning in the kitchen because things do happen it's just not a rehearsal so, you know we burn right. things we make nasty things you know so that's how it is and we like to say if we can do it you can do it so if you burn something just get back in there and you know keep going my tortillas is what I did. <laughs> you know sherry when you were uh, draining the beans you mentioned that you can use the aquafaba to make whipped cream and the guest yesterday actually showed it and my mind was blown but what i forgot to ask her is how long can you keep aquafaba now you know that's a good question yourself because i i don't i'm not very experienced with it i just put it in the refrigerator and maybe keep it for three or four days i you know i try not to keep it too long but i do understand and i've seen people uh take the aquafaba and freeze it like uh, ice cubes put it in the refrigerator and then they can thaw it and use it again so i'm not like that big baker uh usually my egg substitutes are um arrowroot i use an arrowroot as a uh as my um replacer or i use flaxseed or i'll use just eggs because just eggs is an excellent product that you can use in baking that gives you that same consistency of using an egg so that's you know so i'm not really cool on i mean i uh i don't use it as much but it's something that i will be experienced with a lot more next year so 
Great. Uh, question from a live viewer for both of you. Do you gain weight using so many muts, nuts? I cannot do that. Well, are you moving your body is what you have to ask. Well, actually she is because this lady's a fitness instructor. Okay. Well then, then I, I don't know. That's interesting because I don't, I haven't gained any weight with nuts, but it, you know, I don't know about you Paige, how you feel well, about it. Let's say it's not like I have nuts every day. Right. I think you have to think about your, when my kids were younger, we would talk about literally grazing and you would look at what they ate in a week and a month. So you'd literally, I'd say like, maybe they, all they had that day was watermelon. Like they were just really into watermelon. Then maybe they'd have a little pasta or something. So then I would look at the full week and I'd be like, did they get all this? So I think that's important. But if you're gaining weight, eating too many nuts, like yourself, you want to look at how to dial that out because each yeah. body is different. That's so. True look and see like, okay, maybe I, maybe I better cut down on that nut, have more of this nut or seed instead, like really get the hemp seeds going in your life. So I think that's an individual question for sure. I love the question because that's it's important, but I also think you got to mix things up and not just stick like, cause sometimes we get into like a mono mind that like, Ooh, I'm going to have cheesy sauce on everything, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to like, and you know what? Everything is in moderation anyway. Even though you need to eat nuts, everything is in moderation. You know, you know, if you eat too much of something, it's going to have some type of effect to your body. So even if you're a fitness instructor, you know, you really have to be mindful of how much am I eating and which nuts am I eating? You know, so that's how, you know, you usually tell you take a handful of almonds, six or seven almonds a day, you know, think about your uh, omegas. You can have your walnuts, maybe, maybe a few of those Brazilian nuts are amazing. They're a source of protein Four of those a day are good. They will really make you feel full if you're on a crunch trying to eat and you don't have time. So, I mean, it really is moderation. And again, like Paige said, it is your body. What, how is your, your, um, what's the word? Um, oh shoot. I can't, now I'm going crazy. Cause I can't think of your metabolism. How is your metabolism working? You know, I'm very high energy. So of course I need to consume more food. So it just really depends on your metabolism. So I don't know. I hope that helps you somewhat. It's a great <laughs> question. I think we better oh, okay. start even though, and then we'll get back to more questions. Are you ready? Let's get up. Let's get, okay, let's do it. it Are you ready? Let's go. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did it in my I put it in my exercise. <laughs> Let me just say something really quickly because we're going to see how creamy this is because if you, oh, no, it's perfect. If you keep going, you can actually make it a little creamier, but I kind of like it this, oh, this is perfect. So it's going to be pourable, but thick. I wanted it thick and pourable. So, oh my God, right? Mm, okay. So that's our cheesy sauce. Are we ready to assemble our tacos? What do you think, y'all? Sherry, are you assembling over there? Yeah, but I want to show them just what the texture looks like with the with the uh, mash. I'm just going to put it on a little spoon here so you can kind of get an idea of what oh. it looks like. So this is what it is. This is what we have. This is the mash. This is, again, like I said, onion, cilantro. You got the chickpeas. You have lemon. You have whatever seasonings you want to put in it for your for your palate, right? So I put garlic, I put onion powder, I put a little bit of pepper, put some Old Bay in that, did that. Then we're just gonna put it on a toasted because I like my bread toasted, toasted up. I put some extra greens on there so I can really have this plant-based experience with this food. So let's see if I can cut this nicely mm. again, you know. Here's the thing I've been tasting along the way, because you do want to taste. Do you want to taste to make sure if you want to add the other seasonings and things? So just as a chef, you know, you want to do that. All right. How cute is this? This is my little tortilla warmer. Keep them warm in there. So I, I love that. that. Now, uh, oh, I got to show you what the what the what the brand is on these. I absolutely love these. I got I just got to say these Siete almond flour. Yes. So I just like to do that. And so those are what's in here. Now, I. <laughs> How cute is this? My friend Diana gifted me this cute little everything. Um, she knew oh, I was cute. I like that. Cute. Anyway, yeah. So you put your taco, um, your taco, you know, shell. 
So cute, the little shell. Thank you. We help each other out when we're like <laughs> untied. <laughs> you put these in here. Now, I just, what I did to warm these up, just want to tell you because we are no oil, no sugar, no, no salt. salt. Right? So, what I did to warm these up is I just put them straight on the burner, y'all. Straight on mm -hmm. the burner. Hold on. And you got to make sure you're watching because wah, wah, wah. you don't want that. To <laughs> Let me just tell you, I would definitely eat that. You would eat this? Of course. I like them a little crunchy like that. <laughs> okay. Sherry, Sherry, I'll, I'll head on over after this. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not going to not. Yeah, we're going to work with that. So anyway, or you can put it into your compost. So you remember me talking about compost and you got to kind of sing it when you do. But have one next to you. You can put everything in their coffee grounds, tortillas, everything that you're, you know, mixing and making that you're not using for your broth or for your broth. Everything goes in here. Banana peels um orange peels um you know pickles whatever your onions okay now i'm so excited so we're gonna put the taco meat in here which is gonna go oh. right in there these are gonna be so good i also wanted to make mention that um if you want to everybody you can also do a lettuce leaf boat yeah to make but I, I decided to kind of mix it up a little bit um, if you wanted to put the taco meat instead of using a tortilla shell. So right. what we have here, we are going to add more of the, oh, wait, Sherry, you look like you have something to say. Back to you. No, no, I was just, you know, I have a house full of people. So I'm just, you know, just making sure everything stays quiet. <laughs> Here's a question from Stan. Should we be calling it meat when it's vegan? Ooh, well. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know what what is the really the definition of meat is the definition. Look, I don't know the I'll definition right of now. meat. Is. Good, good, good call. Yeah. I think I've looked yeah. up meat and I've looked up milk because some people will say, "Should we be calling it milk?" It, you know what? When I look it up, I googled it and it said the definition of meat is the flesh of an animal. Oh wow! So I, that's a good. Well, that was an excellent question. Yeah, it so says the then I show other it. edible parts of animals. I mean, it's interesting. The yeah, it is. That's the thing. Yeah, so maybe that's why we call it alternative. You know what? Why don't we call it the walnut mixture? I like that. Yeah. We'll call okay. The mixture. That's, that's an excellent question because now look how we all learned something just then. Well, no, because you can seriously, you know, thank you, Stan, because when I Googled yes. the definition of milk, it said an opaque white fluid, rich in fat and protein secreted by mammals. And listen, believe me, I don't want to ever make, you know, the people right that are against vegans. But remember when they made a big deal about calling almond milk milk? Yeah. Well, yes, you know, yes. playing devil's advocate here, if that's really the definition, maybe well, it's not milk. I think you got to go a little deeper on the definitions because the first definitions Though, but if you go into milk, like when you think about coconut milk, it says something about um, the squeezing or like almond. I forget how what it was. It was like something how you were squeezing it out of something. You were so I don't know with the milk. I, I know, know coconut. They, they do call coconut so milk coconut milk because that's what they call it and that's what it is. So I guess. I guess, yeah, I, I guess maybe, I don't know. That's a super good question. And you got to make me really think about that. Uh, we, a need a le we need a legal expert. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you know what the thing is, is that I guess maybe the reason why we would say that is because it triggers something in somebody else's mind that this is what it's going to be. This is what it's replacing when you say meat alternative, right? Because most uh processed products that you buy, they don't really say meat, like beyond meat tells you it's beyond meat. That's kind of, I guess what they're thinking about meat alternatives, plant-based meats. So I guess we're making a new genre of vocabulary that's going to happen for just this vegan population and for people to understand through marketing. So that's kind of the concept I would get from that. I don't know if I went too deep on this. <laughs> that's just what I'm thinking. So everyone wants to know what you ladies have planned for the holiday weekend. Any special meals or things? Well, I am going to do a meal um, 
Terry McWhorter has a cookbook that I just absolutely love. Um, and it also has inspiration, you know, stories in there about people who went plant-based and people who went vegan and different types of vegans, like raw, not raw, semi-cooked, you know. And in the back, she does have a recipe book. And there's a tofu recipe that my husband absolutely loves. Super easy. Just marinate the tofu. Then you put it in the oven with a little nutritional yeast and seasoning and let it bake. So I'm going to do that with some sweet potatoes and I'm going to do some collard greens with some onions and garlic. Keep it simple. And that's what we're having for holiday dinner. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Well, my family is all watching a game today. They're very in, in, really wanting to get into the spirit of their football team. So we are doing some nachos, a big platter of nachos and cauliflower, buffalo cauliflower after this. So this is my lunch. And then, <laughs> you know, or, uh, yeah, anyway. And then, um, so we're doing a big salad with tofu protein on top yeah. um, and probably some other like nuts and stuff. So that's tonight. And then the rest of we're doing like a, um, um, uh, Italian ravioli type dinner tomorrow night. And then we're making chili. Uh, my daughter's boyfriend's coming. So we have like, my daughter and I have actually created quite a, 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 a recipe day of, 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 we're not really going, I didn't, I don't really remember any specific traditions yeah. or specifically, I mean, I think probably sadly it was the dead pig ham. Um, but my brother had a pet pig to circle back to Tennessee. So he would never eat that. So we kind of veered from that, went with like an Italian um, experience on Christmas day is kind of what our family did. So, yeah. cause my brother really was sad because he had a pet pig and he would never eat ham. Yeah. So there's that. Um, okay. My tacos are, oh, I'm holding them here and I really want to get this cheesy sauce on them. And the other thing we're going to do is we are going to cut up an avocado because I, who likes avocado out there? Are you, are you with me? Yes. So wow. Sherry's, how is that looking? How is your Oh, I'm done. I'm just, mine is ready. I'm just like trying to keep myself from eating it. So that's kind of where I'm at. So let me just show okay. you the nice little sandwich here. We got all these sprouts on here, tomatoes, avocado. We have some mixed greens. I have this beautiful, beautiful salad. That's a kale salad. We have pears, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, cranberries. Um, I made a tahini dressing, super easy no oil. You have the option if you want to put maple syrup in it or not. It's up to you. You can even do agave if you want to do that. It's up to you how your taste buds are. And then a nice little sandwich. And this is what my family is going to have for lunch today, which will actually be our first meal today because I was getting so prepared and ready for uh, this experience with Chef uh, AJ and with Paige. So I was busy. I ran over to the farmer's market though and got a whole bag full of vegetables. So I'm excited about that. So here we go. That was <laughs> delicious. So Sherry, tell us what you do for fitness that makes you look so good. Well, I've been a fitness trainer, certified fitness trainer and Pilates trainer for over 15 years now. And so my model is to move your body at least 30 minutes a day. You know, I worked in an all women's gym and then once COVID hit, um, you know, that changed the game. And so now I'm training all most of my clients via Zoom. And when I have a break, I go out in my backyard and I work out. So I know how important it is, especially as you're aging, that you need to do some strength training in order to, you know, keep yourself uh, functioning. And not only that, they find, I don't know if you ever listened to the two brain docs on Instagram, they talk about uh, how to defeat uh, Alzheimer or dementia is to also make sure that you're working strength training the lower body at least three or four times a week because it does impact the brain. So the, that's what I do. I work out pretty much every day if I can, if my schedule allows 30 minutes. If I can't, I'll do 10 minutes. Or I'll squeeze in one when I'm showing my clients how to do uh, specific exercises. So that's, that's how I do it. And I'm, and I'm vegan. And I tell you, that's like the best thing I've ever done for myself and my, for, for my family is to become um, a vegan and live this lifestyle. So that's how I do it. Fantastic. What do you do for exercise page? I'm really into walking. I do lots of uh -huh. hikes. I, I live in the hills mm -hmm. up, um, near Agora Hills. And I also have 
a Zoom fitness class that I do from a woman who, uh, it's so much fun. We have so much fun. Shout out to you, Lynn, um, that I used to teach with, because I used to teach about eight to 10 classes a week, uh, group mm -hmm. fit. And uh, the, sadly, our gym completely closed down, like shut down. So right. um, I just decided to kind of head in a different direction. And um, so I do some Zoom trainings. I've, I've done some workouts with Sherry. It's been mm -hmm. great. Yes. So those of you out there, um, you know, that's a possibility. And I'm wearing my W29, Sherry. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> she has a company and uh, fitness yeah. gear. So yeah, I have a fitness uh, line that we'll be launching in January, relaunching basically. It's called W29 Activewear. We have a uh, really high quality product. It's a, it's a boutique uh, company. So it's very small and um, focused on making sure that we bring quality is created right here, cut and sewn in Los Angeles. Uh, it's a woman's factory that's doing the work. Um, and it's just been a crazy journey with this, because, you know, business, starting your business can be Oh, not for the soft hearted type of person. It's, it's, it's a tough gig, but you know, if you're passionate, I'm just keep going until I get what I need out of it. So that's what I do. And I want people to look women to look and feel good in their clothes. And so that's kind of how the concept happened. And sure, uh, where, will we, where will we be able to buy this online in a store? It will be online. It will be online. It's like I said, it's a boutique. So I, it's me, myself, and I. So it will be online. Um, we get ready to start the photo shoot in January. So sometime in January, I will probably put something out on social media to let people know that it is up and ready. So we do have a photo shoot uh, lined up in January. So. so what kind of clothing is it exactly? And it's, leg it's leggings right now. Leggings and a bra is what I'm happening because what people don't understand, it's quite expensive to cut and sew your own product and develop and, you know, develop it and the fit and all. So, um, we're starting off really small with the leggings and a bra. That's where we're at right now. We have a jacket already um, developed, but, you know, we have to generate some income in order to get that to the market. So, you know, we're just going to start in baby stages and hopefully people will really love it like I do. I wear it every single day. Uh, even when I was in the gym, I wore it every single day and it is it can stand up to the test of time. I can tell you that. Nice. Yep. Hey, Paige, have you ever heard of Glennon Doyle? Because everybody's not everybody, but some of the viewers say you look like her. I, I had to Google it. I didn't know who she was. Uh, is she? Who, is oh, she? Yeah, I don't know who she is. Uh, she she played on Family. Uh, she played on Family. Uh, oh, God. What was it? Modern Family. I think it is. If that's the right person that I think they're talking about. All right. Let me let me Google. Thank you okay, yeah. that I can do this while y'all are here. <laughs> you got me <laughs> seeing you all now. Back to um, real quickly, W29 Active, where you, she has an Instagram, but also shares Sharia on, on all the socials and so forth. But I I was part of the first iteration. And there's yes. a for your yep. pockets, there's a place I have collected trash on my hikes because there's pockets on both sides. So the little scraps of plastic and trash go into my side pocket on that side, my phone on the other with a little chapstick and a key. Bam, you don't need anything else. You got your hands free and you're like, boop, 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 you know, doing your workout out in this, you know, I get some fresh air. That's my key, fresh air. Now I know it's cold. Yeah. You know people are out there in the cold, but if you just put your head out for a little fresh air and then bring it back in, do that if it's cold. If it's warm, you have no excuse. Get out there and start walking. If it's hot, because it depends on what season you're watching, I understand. Go in the early mornings or late at night. Go later at night. And, to and, and you know what the added bonus is, is you're getting vitamin D. You know, we are so deficient and uh, vitamin D because a lot of people are inside doing work. So if you can get out, let your skin show so that that vitamin, the sun rays can penetrate and give you some of that nice natural vitamin D. So, yes. Hey, so oh, I think, by the uh, way, Tracy McCorder, right? Not Terry, I think. Oh, did I say Cherry? I'm sorry. Tracy McCord. I'm sorry. Thank you for catching that because I really like her. Yeah. Tracy McCord. Yeah. Thank you. I just know you know. Glennon Doyle is an author with 2 million followers on YouTube, but I haven't heard of her, but I, I see a slight resemblance. Oh, I haven't let, me, heard her either. let me know. Let me know when you guys are almost done. Cause you know what the last question is for every guest. What's that? What's that? Well, obviously you haven't watched this show. <laughs> so it's uh, what do you guys eat in a day? People want to know. Oh, okay. Okay. That's not hard. <laughs> yeah. It's not hard. Go ahead, Sherry. 
Okay, I'll start off since, like I mentioned before, I get up really early. I start my first client at 6 a.m. So um, in the morning, I may eat a banana before I start my clients, at least 30 minutes. And then I'll make a protein drink um, using, I love um, Sun Power um, vegan protein drink. So I do a vanilla like that. And then once I finish um, that, I eat a lot. So then I'll have like a breakfast sandwich with Beyond Meat and a just a patty. And I put it on some nice toasted bread with some greens. I would eat that, then go back to work. And then I may have popcorn as my snack. I make fresh popcorn. I love popcorn. So I snack on that. And then whatever I have for dinner, that's pretty much it. My popcorn is my go-to uh, hunger, craver, snack type of thing. And then of course, nuts and fruits, like I bought all these pears. I'm going to be jumping on those today. So, you know, whatever's in the kitchen. You know, it's a lot of vegetables and fruit. Sounds good. Somebody's asking if you drink coffee. I definitely do. <laughs> I drink a cup of coffee in the morning, of course, before, after I drink my water. I drink my water first. I have a cup of coffee. I got this cute little Nespresso. So I do a just plain coffee uh, with some oat, steam oat milk. And sometimes I even have tea throughout the day. So I have a clear, uh, it's called clear mind tea. It has ginkgo biloba, a lot of stuff in there to keep your energy up. So I drink that also. Yeah. Nice. What about you, Paige? Wow. Well, I am one of these people that is not necessarily like the exact same thing every day. I like to mix things up. That's just kind of how I do life. So I might start with a smoothie in the morning and I've kind of been, um, exiting out of the powders, just I'm, mm -hmm. I'm exploring some new things. My body has changed a lot um, in the last couple of years when I stopped working out. So it's like getting motivated to work out for myself, for me not to teach. So that's a new thing. So I've been doing, but I've actually been doing a lot of juicing. I've been juicing yeah. a lot and then smoothies, but I do love a jackfruit taco. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like for sure. Yes. Um, we do love the tofurkey sausages. So we'll mix those up and put them in. I'm um, just mostly, I'm kind of headed more into a raw experience now, 80, 20, again, queen of green, that's eat yourself sexy journey. So I eat a lot more raw stuff. So I'll make a taco like this with a lettuce boat. Um, like I said, it kind of makes things up. I like a variety and I think that's important to have a variety. Yes. Exactly. Diet. I do love a ladies lunch. I do like to go out to the places near us and support the local businesses. So, you know, there's Crossroads Calabasas, there's Joy Cafe, there's Mock and Vegan Sushi. Um, and I can usually find something at those places or the Thai vegan, which I love. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much, I'm sorry. It wasn't more than, a, oh, dates. Oh yes. I just, it's yeah. Dates. Dates. With, the, yeah. with a little nut butter in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's then maybe, where it's at. If you want something sweet, just add a little bit of that cacao and make a smoothie with a banana with your nut butter and a date. You're set. So that would maybe be like a afternoon jump up. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, if you like raw page, come tune in tomorrow an hour earlier at 10, because we're going to be doing a raw Christmas with raw intuitions, Matt Bennett. Wow. I love Matt. He's one of my favorite people. He's really great. I love Matt. We did a lunch break live not too long ago. He's super cool. I love all the raw folks. I'm so impressed. I'm like, how do you do this? Yeah, I love it too. I mean, it's something I'm going to venture into eventually, but I do notice that I'm, I'm eating that way, but I'm not really saying raw because I haven't really just like put it together. Like this recipe we just had basically is, is raw because you have chickpeas, avocados, and just some greens mixed in it. That's considered raw, except I added the bread, but you don't have to have the bread. You can scoop it. You can actually put it in your avocado, this mix, put it in another avocado, sprinkle it with some tomatoes and things and just eat it out like a cup. So it just really depends on what you feel like doing with your food because you can do a lot of things with it. Nice. Any last thoughts or hopes, wishes, dreams? Mm. Mm. We invite you to come get inspired. We invite you to share. We are Unchained TV. Uh, you know, that's where you can find us right now. Plant-based in the birth. So you can head over to our socials as well. We're on Facebook. We also have our Instagram, Plant-based in the Burbs. Both of our names. You can find yeah. us, Sherry Cherie, Paige Parsons. And then on, on Tuesdays, we do a Let's Chat we have people come on live, uh, Instagram live and we have people come from our community and come on and tell us about their vegan story, what they're up to today and what it is, what is their legacy that they like to leave 
on this planet once they leave. So we kind of do that every Tuesday at 11 o'clock. It's live on my Instagram or sometimes page. So Sherry Cherie, our page, Parson Roach, which has really been amazing. We've been having some great guests on there and learning a lot of information. So nice. Yeah. Hey, who came up with the name Plant Based in the Burbs? <laughs> well, it was in a, we were something else. We were the shift show. <laughs> that really fast and it sounds like something else so we shifted out of the shift show and it was in a conversation i think it was the three of us with jane yeah. dane yeah with jane yeah, the three of us and it was kind of like well we live in the bur- burbs and so it became plant-based in the burbs yeah right right shout out to you jane we love you <laughs> that's great well i wish you guys a very happy holiday season thanks for coming on this was a lot oh. of fun Thank you so much, Chef AJ. I mean, this has just been really wonderful. I love it. And uh, you have a happy holidays as well. Absolutely. You know, and is, you guys each is. get two bottles of California balsamic vinegar for the first oh. time on the show. So you'll be getting a little Christmas present. You'll be getting an email from me right afterwards. Oh, you you didn't know and you came on anyway. Well, thank you, ladies. This was wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Everybody, peace and plants, y'all. And plants. Thanks. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Come, please come back an hour earlier tomorrow. We're starting early on Christmas Day at 10 a.m. with Matt Bennett from Raw Intuition. He's going to be making a raw Christmas dinner and his dishes include things like a banana nog, a fennel apple slaw, and something he's calling angel to